So, a new episode. Gonna continue where we uh, left off last time, and that is uh, finishing off this uh, lintel, lintel. Um, uh, as you have seen, it's two planks on top of this uh, wooden IPN structure that I've built to obviously support the roof above the opening of the doors. Uh, yeah, I've placed uh, an oak, oak plank in front of it and underneath it to make it, giving it the uh, appearance of being a solid oak uh, beam. We didn't put an oak beam there because it was just way too heavy. It was really impractical. And uh, yeah, what I've done now is at least as strong and a lot lighter. Now that's uh, not really going to work. Uh, this is 80 grit, very coarse, but the wood glue that I've used is a very strong wood glue. I think it was even labeled as extra strong. I'm just going quickly over it with the planer. Yeah, because uh, that's gonna take me hours. <laughs> So the uh, paint, it's not oil, I keep referring it as oil, it's, uh, it's this stuff, I get it from uh, Brico Depot, and it's a, uh, yeah, we used to have a product called Carboleum, Carboleum, well that, that stuff is not available anymore, for environmental reasons obviously. So this is uh, what we've been using. We've been using this all over the garden. So first I treat the wood with an inhibitor, a, a, a water thin coating of a, yeah, sort of a toxin that you put on, it soaks into the wood. And then we finish it off with this stuff. This color is called Chien Foncé. It looks a bit purple, um, but it will turn dark, dark Chien, which is oak, once it's dried. Um, yeah, this is uh, Resistance O uh, UV and uh, it dries in two hours. You need two coats and you thin it with water as with most products these days. It's all water based. Yeah, well, it's all over the garden on the wood, uh, works well. And uh, yeah, once, once I got the surroundings done, so all the all, all, all the gaps filled and, and uh, the rendering done, this will look like one one solid beam. I'm, I'm pretty okay, I'm pretty happy with the result. I'm happy that it's in. It's now uh, yeah, filling up the gaps above and then installing rain gutters, really important. So we've uh, 
received these window frames already a while back. We had them made to measure. And uh, it's, not, it's not time yet to install them, but uh, I'm going to prepare them. It's bare wood, so I've got to uh, treat it and we want to have them varnished just like I did in the little house. They're the same window frames really, double glazed windows. Um, yeah, as you might know, I always use the Epifanus brand varnish. This is a, a varnish we used on boats with wood exposed to salt water and sun and uh, this is just a very very good and very forgiving uh, varnish I'm not being sponsored by Epifanus at all unfortunately but uh, just wanted to give you uh, a tip you know it's, it's just really good stuff not the cheapest but with these things you know you, you can't really skimp on the price Glues, caulking, varnish, that sort of things, paints. It becomes a nightmare if you take the cheapest uh, available and then have to redo it uh, because it just didn't work as, as you wanted it to work. So I'm, I've just uh, finished, uh, mixed a batch, 50% thinned with uh, the, the thinner uh, from AP, uh, AP Farnes. 50% let it soak into the wood then I do another coat of 50% and then uh, give it a light sand scuff it up and do a 25% thinned and then uh, just unthinned yeah that'll work really well Now another thing that I'm going to do today, as I'm tidying up around the house really, is take, remove this, this thing here. When we first got here, the soil was up until this level. Yeah. This level. And we took the soil down to uh, the same level as the floor inside the house. So uh, yeah, this was there to prevent water and stuff running into the house but uh, what we're going to do eventually is uh, close up this door uh, with a non-opening glass window just to let light in uh, we're not going to need this door and probably behind this door there will be the staircase up to the first floor master bedroom so uh, yeah doing some break work uh, today Boys, I need to paint there. Yeah, sorry. I need to work there, hey, hey. Yeah. Seriously, I need to be here. Yeah, I just finished this window. You can sit here. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Mango. Can I please do the window here? The trick really is to do it as thin as possible. And many coats, many, many coats. 
An acquaintance of mine had a Riva sports boat. These are beautiful classic wooden boats. And I think they come with like 40 coats of varnish. I'm not gonna do that with these windows, but. Uh, the idea is thin coats and many. And another tip is that uh, you should do this in the morning. After it has warmed up a little, because it's now uh, around two o'clock in the afternoon, it's actually not a good time because in the evening you get a lot of humidity in the air and that can possibly turn your varnish uh, a cloudy, make it look cloudy. Yeah. Not you don't want to do it in bright sunshine, and you don't want to do it in rain, and you don't want to do it in high humidity. So it's not it's not an easy job. But then um this brand is really uh, very forgiving. And I'm not being sponsored by them, unfortunately, Epifanus. Uh, it's warm enough to varnish, but uh, if I wait too long, then uh, all these vines will start growing and I wouldn't be able to reach these uh, window frames anymore. So I really got to do it now. Put on two coats at least, today, tomorrow. Yeah. It's the night they're working in this rose bush. I have a very complicated relationship with plants. Don't understand them. So today we're going to fill up the holes above the lintel, above and on the sides of the lintel there so that I can install the rain gutter. I have rain gutters ready. Um, temperatures are here yeah, quite all right. At the moment it is 12 degrees centigrade outside. That's good. If uh, it'll cure, um, we're going to fill it with uh, with a lime mortar, and uh, that will stop curing below five degrees. And it will get damaged if it starts freezing. It's not going to start freezing. It might drop slightly below five degrees tonight, but I'm just going to take the risk because I want to have that. Uh, that rain gutter up because rainwater is now pouring down the roof over the walls it's uh, making everything green and it's uh, staying stagnant in places it shouldn't be so i really want to have that rain gutter up now i uh, 
had the choice obviously between filling those gaps with a cement mortar or a lime mortar and I've chosen to do this with uh, with lime mortar because it's the traditional way plus lime breeds and uh, I have bought lime yesterday uh, this is from Brico de Po, which is a large uh, DIY store uh, a fairly inexpensive DIY store here in France it's not uh, the lime I've used before so uh, gonna see you how that works out but even if the color is not is off then uh, it doesn't really matter because it it will be behind the, the the rendering that we will eventually do on the house now this is a lime with a NHL number of 3.5 um, the higher the number I think there's only maximum of five the harder the lime will be and the less breathable the lime will eventually turn out to be um, I've been working with the 3.5 and that, that works great. Uh, lower, uh, like a NHL 1 or 2, um, it's not strong enough, I, I find. And um, the, the, the higher one, it doesn't breathe. So uh, for me, there's no real reason to go with the NHL 5. Then I might as well go with, uh, with a Portland cement. So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, putting in two and a half... Uh, buckets of the recycled mortar that I have. I have almost a big bag full of mortar just coming from the walls in the master bedroom and that's not even everything. I still have bits of wall to do but it's an unbelievable amount of uh, mortar has been or mortar lime rendering has been put on that wall up to an inch thick in, 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 in places. So I uh, got almost a full bag. That's what, a thousand liters? Yeah, a thousand liters, a eh? cubic meter. So yeah, two and a half buckets of the recycled mortar and one bucket of lime and then uh, add water to taste. And I'm going to make it fairly thick and then uh, stuff it in with my hands. Yeah. That's the plan. So the color of the outside rendering is determined by the lime, the color of the lime and the color of the sand because it's a lime sand water mixture. Now I have just bought a lime which is told to me, said to me that it has the color that I want to achieve which is uh, basically the same color as the church next to us. It's a little bit of a uh, off-white, yellow-ish kind of color. Um, I've got 
two sorts of sand. I've got some sand from a uh, DIY store and I've got the recycled mortar that came out of the wall, right? Came from the wall. So I'm just going to uh, have a little experiment on that wall behind me with uh, the two different kinds of sand and this lime. i show you the lime. It's uh, oh, this one, St. Astier. Uh, it's also a 3.5 and it's, uh, yeah, show coloré, it says. We're gonna give this a try. I've never used this one. I've used the brand before. I have used the brand. I've used the brand on the little house, but the little house is uh, way too wide to our liking. And that can be caused by the lime or the sand or a combination of the lime and the sand used. Now, I know that the sand I have now from the DIY store is more yellow than the sand I've used on the little house. Um, but we're gonna see it in combination with this lime. Uh, we're just gonna try it out on that uh, that wall there and then if that works out and we know how to get the right color then uh, that's gonna be the color for the uh, complete exterior of the house. Okay, so I just brushed up uh, the rendering, the lime rendering. It uh, had, it's not set. It was cold last night, uh, two, three degrees centigrade. So that's the point where lime stops curing, but it's not, it's not frozen, you know. I mean, uh, it, it, it'll still be fine if today the weather warms up and it will, and then it will continue curing. So it was sort of um, firm, but not, hard not dry so i've just scuffed it up uh, lightly with a stainless steel brush and this provides me key uh, to continue on brushing when uh, the lime is set a bit more and i can uh, put a little bit more power in and get a little bit uh, yeah structure and, and visual effect going so it's it's just a bit of a trial and error section uh, for now if this combination of lime and sand and technique works out uh, fine we're happy with the results then we'll do the rest of the house uh, with that as well i've done the old the old wall it's not an old wall it's a new wall effect 
uh, that I've recently built, right? And I've done a section of, uh, well, the exterior of the bathroom building. Um, yeah, so later today, when it's more set, I will brush it a lot more and, and get some detail going in it and make it look uh, presentable. Window frame doesn't really fit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's not very far off. Um, but yeah, I'll have to get the, uh, the big grinder out and, uh, and the wood saw and make it fit. So I thought it's now a Saturday morning. I thought I'm just going to quickly fit a window. Nah, there's, there's no five minute jobs. That's going to be next week. Yeah, that's going to be next week, people. Yeah, so that means that uh, that's the vlog for this week. It's come to an end. Um, I, I would like to uh, thank you all for watching, for liking, for subscribing. Um, if you can leave a comment, uh, 9 out of 10 times I will reply to it. And uh, well, as this channel is still costing me money to make all these videos, your donated coffees are very, very welcome. See the link below or see the link in the description. If you feel I deserved it, then you can uh, buy me a cup of coffee. I, uh, I'm going to see you next week. Bye now.